Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 44 mag gel block test series. In this episode, we're looking at the Barnes XPB pistol bullet, and this is the 225 grain all copper uh, large hollow point bullet. And uh, we're going to be putting this in the gel block with four different barrel lengths and getting velocities and checking penetration and all the good stats on that. So let's turn around here and take a look at the loading, and then we'll head on out to the range. So here's a look at the loading on this. So of course, the, the Barnes XPB pistol bullet. This is a 225 grain. This is actually .429 uh, round enforcer. And this is the first loads that I have ever done with round shot enforcer. Uh, I was looking through the load data on Barnes website for this round and the enforcer was listed as one of the uh, powders that gave the best velocity with this round. So I went on a search, took me about six or seven shops in about a week and a half and I finally found a one pound jug of this over at Stevens Gun in Summit, Kentucky. And uh, of course, uh, my modified uh, Winchester primer case. Uh, this is actually the Winchester large pistol slash large pistol magnum. And I do not have a case for those for the for the pictures anymore. So I'm using an old uh, T09 primer box here. And here is a good look at the actual bullet and loading on this. There's uh, quite a big chunk of this uh, piece of copper down in the case on this. And if we get up here, Let's see if we can get in there and see a good look at that hollow point. So, all right guys, that big hollow point and the relief cuts in this is what makes it expand reliably at these lower velocities. So, all right, let's get out to the range and see what this thing does. All right guys, up next in our 44 mag gel block test series is the, uh, the Barnes XPB. This is a 225 grain all copper bullet. Uh, with a large hollow point, uh, initially designed by Barnes to expand at low velocity. So we're gonna check that today. We'll be running this round out of a 20 inch Rossi R92, a nine and a half inch Ruger Super Red Hawk, um, a four inch Taurus Tracker, and a two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson 44 Combat Magnum. And uh, velocity is coming from the Garmin and catches by clear uh, ballistics. First up is going to be the uh, lever action rifle. All right, velocity of 1393.6 and let's go see if we got the catch. So here's where the wound track for the 20 inch Rossi R92 starts. And uh, we've got nice expansion out here by about an inch. Uh, got a nice large uh, temporary wound cavity out here to about six and a half inches. And then this thing settles down a little bit and straight line penetration. We may have bounced off the plate there for just an instant. And uh, overall penetration out here at 21 inches. And looks like this thing has opened up very nicely. So uh, let's go back and see what the uh, nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk will do. Next up is the Super Red Hawk with the Barnes 225 grain XPB. Velocity of 1384. That's pretty close to the rifle velocity, guys. All right, let's go check out the catch. So the wound track for the uh, Ruger Super Red Hawk nine and a half inch starts right here. Again, we've got expansion by about an inch. And then we've got a much larger temporary wound cavity here than what we had with the rifle. Uh, our temporary wound cavity extends all the way down to about 10 inches. And then we go pretty much into straight line penetration for an overall penetration of about 25 inches. 
and it does look like we got nice complete expansion on this bullet again. There's a look at it from the top side without the glare. All right, next up is the uh, Taurus Tracker. This is the M44 medium frame revolver with the Barnes XPB 225 grain. I don't know if you've seen my review on this pistol or not. It's it, If it's not up right now, it'll be posted up in a day or two. But one of the things that I noted was that the cylinders on this really need polished up quite a bit. It is very difficult to extract the brass out of this. So that was my really my only knock on the... Uh, on this Taurus tracker. All right, so velocity again was 1191.3, and let's go see if we got the catch. All right, so wound track for the uh, for the Taurus tracker starts right here. Again, expansion almost identical to the rifle and the Super Red Hawk. Uh, and very equivalent temporary wound track from uh, from this four inch is what we got out of the uh, nine and a half inch. So take a look here. Uh, wound track starting about an inch and a half and extending all the way down to about 10 inches and then settling down for some straight line penetration. Uh, this time we stopped at about 21 and three quarter inches, just right above the rifle round. And it does appear that we got pretty good expansion out of this bullet. If I can get it to focus on the bullet, instead of the debris on top of the block. All right, that's probably as good as we want to get till we get it dug out of here. All right, let's go back and see what the two and three quarter inch uh, combat magnet can do with this. All right, next up is the uh, Smith & Wesson two and three quarter inch combat magnum with the Barnes 225 grain XPB bullet. All right, no velocity, and I don't think we got a catch that time. It looks like that one skimmed out the top. Let me go double check. did lose that one. It curved right up and right out of the gel block. All right, let's try this again. All right, we did get a velocity that time of 1154.1 feet per second. And I'm pretty sure we got the catch, so let's go check it out. So wound track for the Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum starts right here and almost identical uh, wound tracks for the nine and a half and the four inch. We have uh, pretty much complete expansion by an inch and a half or so. We have a nice temporary wound cavity down here to about 10 inches, which really mirrors uh, very closely the nine and a half and the four inch uh, pistol. And then we got straight line penetration down here to about 19 and a half inches. And it does look like this bullet did fully open up, so. We got good expansion on all these bullets uh, across the range of barrel lengths. 
So that's pretty encouraging. All right, guys, so we're back and got these dug out and uh, just impressive results. So 20 inch rifle, nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk, four inch Taurus and a two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. And this is just good expansion all the way across the, the whole um, the whole spread of the, of the different barrel lengths and velocities here. So uh, this bullet right here was running at 1154 foot per second. And we still got this kind of expansion. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's, that's really good performance right here. Uh, big note right here, the difference in these two bullets, nine and a half inch barrel super red Hawk at 1384 foot per second, 20 inch Rossi R92 at 1394 foot per second. So 10 foot per second difference for 11, 10 and a half inches of extra barrel is what we ended up with right here on these two. You can see they look almost identical. So, all right, guys. There it is, guys. Just an impressive result. So the spreadsheet's coming up here uh, as a slide right after I get done talking in this clip. Uh, and uh, also coming up right before the spreadsheet is a ballistics chart that I've, I've created. And uh, I found a nice little online program that lets me do those real quick and easy. And then what I'm doing is I'm... I'm putting in the fastest velocity, uh, which is typically the 20 inch rifle. So 1,394 foot per second. And, and then I go down and I highlight the velocities from the nine and a half inch Red Hawk, uh, Super Red Hawk, the uh, four inch Taurus and the two and three quarter inch Smith and Wesson. And what we end up getting is uh, the velocity of the, of the two and three quarter inch Smith and Wesson Combat Magnum at 1154. Uh, is 90 yards uh, equivalent for the rifle. So if you were running this, actually at 10, 10 foot per second velocity spread, if you were running this load out of the Super Red Hawk or the 20 inch Rossi lever action, this is the kind of expansion you could expect at 90 yards. So that's a, that's a really good gauge. It's, uh, you know, everybody's wanting, well, I want to see you shoot the gel block at 100 yards. Well, this is it. This is the equivalent of me shooting gel block out of the Super Red Hawk or the rifle at 100 yards right here. And that's about the only way you're going to see it from me, guys. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of trips back and forth to the gel block. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of time as it is. And then at 100 yards, hitting a 6x6 six six, uh, plate or 6x6 six six end is not... It's not that difficult, but being able to keep this bullet in the gel block, because if it's tracking down, you're going to lose it out the bottom. If it's left or right a little bit and it hits, it, it can curve in, it can curve out. So just uh, lots of challenges to actually shooting gel block at distances with small gel block. Now, if we had a, a, a three by three chunk of gel block that was four foot long, uh, you know, that'd be a little bit easier, but then I'd hate to have to dig those out. But all right, guys, so uh, let's hear your comments uh, and questions if you've got any. All, all right. right, so coming up, I'm also going to be testing the 200 grain Barnes XPB bullet, and uh, we'll see how they compare. Uh, 25 grains difference in weight. Uh, the velocity is going to end up going up quite a bit on the uh, 25 grain lighter bullet. You got lighter bullet, you've got more powder, more velocity. And uh, we'll be able to compare these two uh, side by side when I do the, the spreadsheet for that one. I may actually copy the, uh, the data back down onto the bottom and have them both shown at the same time. That way you can just go back and forth on the spreadsheet and you can compare these out of each gun on um, the loading. So, uh, so, all right, guys, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button and feel free to share any of my videos. I mean, I will not get mad. You can share every single video I've made for the last five years and it wouldn't hurt my feelings a bit. But uh, <laughs> seriously though, feel free. If you've got a friend or a buddy who uh, you think might be interested in some of this content, scroll down there underneath the video, hit that share button and copy that pay link and paste it over in an email or a text uh, or even paste it on social media in a group and, and uh, you know, share my content out. I, I would love that. That brings more viewers in, it brings more viewing time in, and that actually is what generates the revenue that helps me offset my costs for doing all this stuff. And uh, and I appreciate that. So, uh, all right guys, Matt from Kentucky Range Time. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.